Hey, I'm Greg Hughes from Vans Aircraft. We're here at AirVenture 2021 in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And behind me here is the Vans Aircraft RV-14A. This is our largest two-seat airplane side-by-side. -side. The A model means it has a tricycle gear. We also have the RV-14, which has a tailwheel, the little wheel in the back. This is a really fun airplane. It's built for the modern American, so to speak, a little bit bigger, a little bit wider. Uh, it's the muscle car of the fleet, right? This thing gets up and goes, it climbs like crazy off the ground in a few hundred feet, landing and stopping once you get to know it in a couple, a few, a few hundred feet. Uh, and actually the RV-14A went through some pretty significant updates, this particular one, and you could do it on the 14 or the 14A, but last year our engineering team for about a one year period of time put in a really significant project and took this airplane from a 203 mile an hour airplane to a 216 mile an hour airplane. Now if you know anything about, about airplanes and getting eking performance of it, adding 13 miles an hour in that range on is a really, really big deal. The way they did that was first of all, we went from an IO290A engine at about 210 or so horsepower to the IO390 EXP119 engine from Lycoming, which is an experimental enhancement, if you will, to the certified IO390C that's used on, on some certified airplanes with some changes. Lost about nine pounds by taking uh, out a couple of the gears that be used to drive a, a vacuum pump went to a cold air induction magnesium sump that's lighter, a billet oil pump that's lighter, a number of other changes. And we also changed the fuel servo. So the fuel servo on your typical IL390, about that big around, and we went to the one that's on that we use on the RV10 on the six cylinder engine and put that thing on there. Great big honking fuel pump that goes on there. And we also changed the snorkel, which is the uh, air induction air uh, pipe that thing, the air flows through tuned that up a little bit and ended up gaining a lot of performance. Aerodynamic changes we made to it included closing off the exhaust ramp, if you will. So there was a ramp cutout in the bottom of the airplane that's been closed off. And the place of that now inserted into that is a cowl flap. It's really more of a belly flap since it's behind the cowl. But it's openable by the uh, pilot in the cockpit so that when needed, you can get a little bit of extra exit area to change your cooling uh, strategy. I think of the RV-7 as the Camaro of our fleet, right? And the RV-9 is the Ford Taurus. What was it like the SHO, right? It was the one that, it's the like the sports car Ford Taurus, because there's a sports car Ford Taurus, right? The RV-9 is not aerobatic, the RV-7 is. The RV-10 is the Escalade or the Suburban depending on how fancy you make the inside, right, and the things you add to it. But it's it's the really big SUV is what it really is. It's a four-seat airplane. It's a nice, big, roomy airplane, that kind of thing. If you took the RV-7 and the RV-10 and they had a baby, it would grow up to be an RV-14. It uses the RV-10 airfoil. And in reality, from a direct lineage perspective, the RV-14 is more like the RV-10, structurally speaking, than the RV-7. But the RV-7 and the 14 are both side-by-side -side fully aerobatic airplanes. The RV-10 and the RV-9 are not. But this is the same airfoil on this airplane that you find on the RV-10. In fact, the part numbers are actually identical for a lot of the wing that you would build for the RV-10. For the RV-14, it uses RV-10 part numbers. So this airplane holds about 25 gallons in each wing. So 50 gallons, so a little bit more than you'll find in an RV-7. Um, Performance-wise, you know, takeoff and landing is, uh, is nice and short. Uh, it climbs like crazy, uh, you know, so it's, in doing flight test with this, uh, uh, solo weight, you know, climb rates well above 2,000 feet per minute are not unusual at all. At full gross, approaching 2,000 feet per minute, somewhere in, in that range, uh, is entirely possible. Uh, like we mentioned before, the speed on this airplane, top speed on this configuration is about 216 miles an hour at max gross weight. In a solo weight configuration, leave and go a little bit faster than that. Uh, typical cruise speeds, you know, a couple hundred miles an hour, somewhere in there, for an economy cruise is pretty common. Uh, it'll get in and out of short fields. Uh, it'll do pretty much anything you want. So flying this airplane and dialing it back to about 24-24, for example, if you're doing that type of cruise, uh, and if you're leaning it out and you're at about 8,000 feet, you know, burning less than 10 gallons an hour is pretty darn easy to do. So depending on how you lean it and how you tune it, 
density, altitude, and what have you, you, you can get it down below nine, nine, uh, nine gallons an hour at times uh, in an economy cruise. The range on this airplane, you know, you're going to be able to get, again, it depends on how you fly it, but you know, 800 to 1,000 miles out of that. From a useful load, the, the baggage compartment is a 100 pound baggage compartment. And so the, and the, the load that you can put in there and how you load it is really kind of dependent on how you configure the airplane on the front end of the airplane, right? So if you have a lightweight engine and a lightweight prop and a lightweight battery, you know, then you might, it's actually possible to limit the load that you could put in the baggage compartment, right? So determining that during the build is just part of what builders do when you're building the airplane to make sure that it meets your mission requirements. You can build it super, super light, uh, or, and you can also configure it and build it so that you have the ability to, to, to load it up and, and fully load the baggage compartment and go a long, long, long distance. The RV-14A is the latest kit from Vans Aircraft. It's the most modern kit, has the most modern and most advanced plans. So step-by-step -step instructions on each page with ISO view drawings, exploded drawings on the page that reference the instructions you're working on. And you know, as a result, it goes together really, really quickly. So for somebody who's building a, a standard build kit, not quick build, somewhere in the 14 to 1600 hour range would not be unusual. We've had folks that have built RV-14s and RV-14As from a standard build kit in less than a year and quite a few that have built them in less than a year and a half that's doing it they have jobs and they're doing that as well to buy the rv14 kits you're looking at it somewhere in the thirty-six thousand dollar range for the kits that you buy from us uh, and somewhere closer to the forty-nine thousand dollar range if you buy the quick build kits from us lead times on those if you want to buy the tail kit for the rv14 it's about a four month lead time from the time you place it to the order to the time we will create it and then get it created and shipped to you. For the wing and fuselage kits, we're a little bit closer right now at this point in time to eight to nine months, and the finished kit is somewhere in the same range, nine to 10 months. Quick build kits are, are a bit over a year right now, just because of the number of orders that we have. You know, uh, we're, really, we're really fortunate to have a considerable number of orders and quite a bit of demand. So often people ask, but well, what does it cost to build an RV-14, like beginning to end? Because you buy our kits, but there's also some other things that you need to buy. You need to buy an engine and a propeller, avionics and an interior. There's also some other things that people will choose to buy. They might add fancy lights and do some, some other things that maybe are not part of the standard kit. It's part of the beauty of experimental aviation, right, is that you get to decide exactly how you want to do it. And if you want to tweak something or change something or add something, you have the ability to do that. But generally speaking, if somebody wants to build an RV-14, you can build it for in the $130,000 range or so, probably, if you're willing to go and find a good solid used engine, if you can find one and a propeller, and you keep the avionics light, then you can be in that range. Typical, you could also go and you could spend upwards of a couple hundred thousand dollars if you wanted to build you know, a, a brand new engine and a prop, which is what most people do, and then add, go, just go crazy on the avionics, so to speak, full IFR, maybe two navigators, et cetera, et cetera, the things that tend to add price. Uh, propeller choices, whether you go with a metal aluminum two-blade propeller or a composite three-blade propeller can significantly change the price of the propeller. But basically, what I usually tell people to plan for an RV-14 in this day and age is probably right around $140,000 for a typical VFR RV-14 or 14A, and then you add to it from there to go IFR, really based on avionics. And generally speaking, that tends to be about where people fall. If you want to find out more about the RV-14A or any of the other aircraft at Vans Aircraft, you can visit our website at vansaircraft.com. Of course, you can also give us a call, visit us at a show like Oshkosh or Sun and Fun or one of the other shows that we're at. All different options, and we'll be more than happy to talk to you. And certainly, if you ever have questions, always feel free to ask. It's a great community of people. We love talking to you. We're builders, too. This is what we do. We're in the business of fulfilling people's dreams they've had ever since they were little kids, and we've had the same dreams. And so we really enjoy talking to folks about building these airplanes.